Hi and welcome to a brand new show of Market Makers. Good books, great actors, and great movies. They don't need no introduction. And when it comes to market, Ramdev Agarwal needs no introduction because markets adore him and they admire what he's managed to create and uh, construct in last 30 years. Ramdev, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. You've done. Uh, 21 wealth creation studies. Mm. The last one was released in December 2016. Mm. And I've studied some of your wealth creation studies. My compliments I enjoy reading every time, you know, new re studies released. But the, your wealth creation studies have evolved over the years. Yes. So, as a very purpose. if you really have to summarize your 21, uh, essence of your 21 studies, mm. what would be your final conclusion? Because we may feel that things will change, mm. but markets never change. The rule of investing are always the same. You know, mm. courses remain the same, it's just the horses that change. Yeah, so I think uh, one of the biggest achievements of this wealth creation study is the, your distinct philosophy we have got. Okay. That is QGLP. I mean, quality growth, longevity, reasonable price. It's a soup. I mean, if you ask me what is the most valuable thing in uh, Mutilal Swal, it is their own philosophy. And it is not about the philosophy. You can read the book and you can understand what it is. And I am willing to spend many hours and there are so many videos on that. The issue is having faith mm. and practicing. It is my philosophy. You know, so, uh, and it works. I mean, if you see across the AMC, it works wonderfully well. I mean, the world will take notice of it much later. I mean, uh, when you manage 3, 4 billion dollars, nobody bothers about you in this world of trillions. So, uh, but it works in uh, this thing. So, that's a huge achievement. After 22 studies, to have a, a time-tested uh, investment philosophy, 360 degree, really well-rounded uh, kind of thing. Uh, because you write something uh, and then you, you see for yourself it doesn't work. You know, in 6 months, 1 year, 2 years time, 3 years time, you realize that it doesn't work. But I see it works even better. And we are uh, releasing uh, version 2, version 3, version 3 because market is continuously changing and we are adopting to the market every day. So, uh, this QGLP is very flexible approach in a, you know, kind of a continuously changing market. So, uh, I think that is the biggest achievement of our, uh, all those studies and that has, that is, uh, that has changed me. You know, I mean, the way I was as an investor in 85, the way I was in 94, the way I was in 2000, even till 2007, 8, 9, I mean, uh, things were not fully solidified. I mean, it was work in progress kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, you might be seeing, even if you see your, our interviews, you know, yeah. that has uh, changed a lot. And uh, I mean, till 2003, I didn't have courage to take anybody's money. Even my sister's money, I would not take. I said, I will do whatever with my money, but I will not uh, take anybody's money. 2003, we started taking some amount of money from the public. Till about 2014, we have 1500 crores. And now, we are managing 25,000 crores. And I feel, I don't feel scared at all. I mean, this is a very s a big amount of money and it is in trust. I mean, somebody has interested us. Somebody has put faith in us, mm -hmm. which is a very huge responsibility. But I don't feel burdened or anything like that. I don't feel a stress about that. It's a, and that is thanks to QGLP. Mm -hmm. You know, that we have a, a way and we will walk that same path. Outcome is function of uh, how will we do. And a lot of many other things, luck also at the end of it. But if my process is right, even if I, I mean, at least I can say my process is good. Outcome, if it is good, I mean, outcome, it, outcome has to be good. If outcome is not good, it's a bad luck. And uh, if, it, if there is a run of bad luck for two years, we'll also have a run of good luck. That much faith I have in the system. Okay. You know? So, the entire construct of the way you manage public money mm -hmm. is centered around QGLP. Yeah. So, let's take that thought forward. Yes. And talk about uh, this template and throw in the current market. Yeah. Quality growth, longevity and price. I will start yeah. with the last which is price. <laughs> that is, in, in this you have to look at it last. That is why we kept it last. Okay. Otherwise, we, we would have said uh, PQGL. No. We are saying QGLP because it could come in any sequence. But it has to be last. See, QGL, what is a QGLP? First three, QGL, quality, growth, longevity. There are three you have to figure out when you look at a business. Uh, see, value is what you get Price is what you pay. Of okay, yes. this is one of the, one of the simplest things, but this is the, yeah. this is the ultimate. Uh, ultimate I mean, Buffett sells that plaque for twenty-five dollars in his AGM. Yeah. Okay, price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Yeah. So price is known to everybody. Yeah. It is there on flicker of uh, button. You get everything. But what about the value? Who is going to do the hard work of understanding what is the underlying value? Yeah. And value is always approximate number. And value could be different for you and value could be different for me for the same thing. 
because of the background of understanding and things like that. And the time horizon. Yeah, and time, time horizon also all put together value is only one because of price course. is only one. Of course. Okay. okay. So the issue is that uh, uh, mm, what is the process of figuring out value? Okay. Okay. And uh, there are many processes, every person has a different process, there are million guys, million processes, but still you can bucket it, bucket it, you know, uh, uh, somebody calls him country and somebody calls him growth, somebody calls him, uh, you know, whatever, I mean, there, there are ways, uh, there is investment philosophy is the same. So, we say we will do QG, QGL. So, uh, of the QGL, I say QG, do you have QG, top quality business and growth. So, these two are the very important thing for me. If there is no QG, it is no because out of 3000, 4000 companies, 3980 companies are not there in my portfolio. So, I have to be day and night 24 by 7, I have to keep saying no, no, no. I have to say one yes, you know, in 6 months or 3 months. So, job is very difficult for saying no to a lot of companies which look very attractive at so many times. On an average at the MC, you just identify one or two stocks. I mean, that's the endeavor. Yeah, I mean, if you get two, three new stocks in a year, you have more more ideas than you can ever execute. Hmm. Now, since you manage public money, the portfolio of AMC is out in the public domain and as we speak, yeah. you will also flash it. At what CAGR growth do you think this portfolio could grow? I'm not talking about price performance, I'm uh. talking about earnings performance. Yeah, so both will be same, eventually both will be same and uh, we are, That's mean, a direct way of asking you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, so far we have done upwards of 25% okay. and that would be a good, I mean our managers if they can deliver 25% plus in every single product, there are only 6 products, so yeah. we do not have many products, we do not have, within 6 products also every product has only about 15 to 20 ideas, so it is a very focused uh, strategy in every aspect of it, you know, we do only equities. So, <laughs> The confusion is not much. Uh, so uh, and uh, so, uh, I think uh, we would try to achieve that kind of uh, uh, beating the benchmark and uh, uh, getting uh, doubling money in three years. That has been the track record. The future or very near term is a. Much, I mean, only time will tell whether we are able to continue with that or not. Mm. You know, every market they follow a cycle. Mm. Best phase, boom phase, mm. bubble, bust yeah. phase, and bust. The bubble phase and bust phase. Uh. Where are we right now in the market cycle? How young is yeah. this bull market? Yeah. So it is. It is quite. I mean, uh, I would not say it's very young. Uh, I mean, it is three, four, 14, 15, 16. No. So I would say three and a half years for sure. Uh, uh, markets have been rallying. Since uh, Modi has been uh, nominated as the Prime Minister candidate in Goa, since then the market market, in, in anticipation of that only market has started, uh, September or August or something like that. And that rally is still on. So, that India hope story uh, or uh, that story is still on. And uh, now, and uh, it has it is coincidental with the collapse in the oil price and the global equity boom. I mean, US is an unprecedented bull run. Hmm. So, it is definitely giving air cover to the equity as an asset class. And uh, uh, and we are on roll uh, because of uh, lower interest rate, lower inflation, good fiscal deficit, better governance, uh, good possibility that uh, earnings growth will finally happen. This year I was even before uh, coming in the morning, first thing I sent to my uh, research chief that uh, what do you think finally this year's uh, earnings uh, uh, EPS would look. So, because he sent me 496 for the year for uh, Nifty, I said what do you think is your view? So, he said 470, 475 should come, which is also a good improvement, you know, more like uh, 12, 15 At least we are not contracting. Yeah, we are not stagnant or uh, we are moving and next year he is saying 600. Okay. So, uh, so I think uh, we are almost there. Uh, I hope there is no further disruption after demonetization and uh, whatever uh, challenge of uh, uh, wonderful, uh, you know, this GST. Uh, my sense is now with the good monsoon, stable uh, inflation and uh, everything, stable currency also you have almost 400 billion dollars of reserve. Nobody noticed but the reserve has cost 390, 392. Every week it we are go, uh, going up by 2%, uh, 2 billion and I think uh, RBI has to intervene to keep the rupee at 65. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it has gone up a little more and in the process they get lot more dollars. So, uh, I think this is very amazing kind of uh, situation. Your fiscal is under control, inflation is under control, uh, political stability is very high which is first important thing in emerging market and country like India. Which is so everything is uh, right. I mean, macro backdrop is fantastic, and uh, uh, com good companies are doing very well. Valuations are somewhat stretched. 
okay and it is looking like a boom type of uh, p multiple you know, yeah. 24 25 p multiple for current eps so that is scaring people but that's not the only ratio you look at uh, when you are looking at future as a possibility if you are hopeful about the future i mean market can always correct by 5 10% 15% even deeper 20% correction but it is not down and out or it is not a done thing i mean we are not going to die without having earnings growth cycle coming in and it will explode whenever it comes because capex cycle is just not happened you have to have a one full fledged excessive capex cycle to come last time it was steel and cement yeah. this time it will be infra i don't know what it will be that's the beauty of the future but the mean revision is coming ha huh, why earnings mean revision is coming uh, earnings mean revision is coming and capex uh, mean revision will also come okay. from a zero capex uh, uh, some some way capex will build up i mean from the infrastructure government side they are pushing very hard private uh, capex is uh, yet to take off because there some slack in the capacity and all in power sector steel sector and some of the consumer companies also but it's just a matter of time it it is say like uh, automotive i mean like uh, maruti's you know kind of cap putting up capacity every day because they need the capacity mm. so uh, private investment will come as the demand picks up so i think today's interest rate decision is going to be very crucial not for per se uh, 25 bps or 50 bps makes a difference but the consumption economy is very sensitive to these things whether this demand for durables are concerned de demand for housing is concerned it does i mean uh, lower interest rate will help mm. you know before i get into some myopic questions which is themes and sectors i have one follow up question the reason why stock markets are getting supported mm. at these levels is because there is a hope that earnings recovery will happen it could happen this quarter next quarter yeah. but like you said an earnings recovery is, mm. is going to happen mm. but stock prices have already run up in anticipation of earnings yeah. when the real earnings recovery would happen markets mm. would say look we knew this would happen mm. and stock prices have yeah. gone up is that a risk yeah ho sakta hai ki matlab mai jab earnings aaye to market mein refuse to go up exactly that's what jo matlab buy on rumor sell on exactly so we are buying on the rumor of earnings earnings recovery earnings recovery see because what has happened is that i mean independent of earnings your valuations uh, one of the parameters market cap to gdp yeah. so it used to when we used to come earlier three four months back it used to be 70% 65 i used to say that market can go down corrected by 10 to 15% but it cannot remain there on a one year basis because 70% is very low when us is trading at 1.6 yeah. we are at 0.7 i mean we are the growth economy so it has to correct. yeah it has to correct so now we are at about uh, we uh, I, uh, yesterday it was 134.6 or something so 135 acres our gdp is about 150 so we are at 0.9 closer to 0.9 type of uh, market cap to gdp which is not low but uh it is like a mid path kind of thing because next year where your gdp will be 165 and you are at 135 so that 20 lakhs gap leaves you enough room for uh, if recovery comes that much so 12 15% kind of a 12 months prospect is still there so yes it can correct by 15 20% that i would say uh, correction could be uh, quite good uh, and that will make the market much more healthier but uh, i think we are in a i mean uh, in 2007 we picked it 1.7 times 45 lakh crores gdp and uh, uh, market cap was 73 yeah. that is how you know so uh, long, long when the excesses period. happen they don't happen with the margin of uh, gin cake you know like uh, uh, 100 uh, because by that time your gdp say in 2 years 3 years time your gdp itself will be 175 and if you have to do one and half so you are talking about 250 260 type so literally market cap can double and that can happen in 2 3 years time so there is a lot of potential on the upside of course you have to be always careful that they could it could correct i mean these things are in longish uh, calculation uh, and uh, so uh, market is a full of surprise the market is very surprise otherwise it is not market if there is no surprise there is no fun of course of course so but thank you for beautifully explaining that you know it is not a bubble yet no, because that's is, what everybody is that's, that's, that's what i think but i hope i'm right <laughs>
So process is clearly QGLP. I mean, it must yeah. have been a slightly nascent form, but my idea was always that find a great company and look for growth. But initially, I was not knowing so much difference between good company and great company. So whenever you find a great company, great business where uh, returns can be 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 percent kind of return and growth. So what happens is whenever companies they emerge, I mean when they, uh, it's like uh, saying that uh, uh, any business takes 5, 7, 10 years of uh, uh, struggle and then it comes out of the first year profit. So first year profit will be hot typically in a small business will be say 10, 15 crores now, yeah. okay. So that 15 or 20 crores can become 200 crores in very, uh, yeah. very quick, quickly, you know. So uh, say like earnings, you know, in uh, stock market, it is stagnant for so many years. But whenever it will take off, it can take off from 400 to 800 in a breathtaking pace. So we are at an inflection point. We are at an inflection point. So this is what happens in companies, you know, you are, you are struggling with the below break even, below break even, below break even. And then the break even comes and in one swoop the profit goes from 20 crores to 200 crores. So would you say that AMC business? So, yeah, so, yeah, so uh, we have to, uh, so but the market is not so smart in valuing those companies. They say 30 P ho gaya, 40 P ho gaya, Aray bhai, this is going at 50, 60 percent. So I should also ha happen like that. Mm -hmm. It was making when we looked at the company in uh, 2010 or 11. No, 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 I think it was uh, four, five years back, four, four years back, five years back, mm -hmm. when it was, uh, uh, about, about 2000 crores, the profit was about 100 crores, so 20 or maybe profit was a little more or, mm -hmm. or market cap was a little, uh, little less. So at that point of time, uh, the uh, we bought it as a truck story and what happened was we thought that uh, RE is a backup. If truck does not happen, this will not allow us to sink. So uh, my call was uh, the worst is that in the next 5 years it will double or it will go to 10 times. If we are successful, it will go to 10 times and if, if we fail, the failure will be at least double. That was the call in Aisha. I clearly remember. I said downside is 15 percent, upside is 40, 45 percent component. So it worked out. Okay. So when the uh, RE became popular and uh, they started earning money from that uh, 15, 20, 15, 70 percent EBITDA margin, now there are 32 yes. percent EBITDA margin. 25 percent carrier growth even on yeah. this. I looked at the so, numbers. Yeah. So that time they were going at 70, 80 percent yeah. and the stock was level at 20 P. Whenever your earnings growth for next 3, 4 years is going to be say 2 X of your P. Say your P is 20 but you expect the growth to be 40, you are sitting on a multi-bagger. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. So you know that formula we had done up right from 2003, uh, th that compounding and how it works and all. These are all gift of uh, wealth creation study. So I have in back of my mind, whenever I get any stock, good quality stock at half the peg, you have to pile on. Are you seeing that opportunity somewhere? Opportunity keeps coming. Every six months, eight months, we'll get one. Mm -hmm. we it is not there as a, uh, as we so there are not 20 thing. ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't have any idea like that right now. But mm -hmm. Quite possible when you I go, uh, go out from your office, you might get that idea. You, you always hint at what you are looking at. You know, two years ago you told me it was United Spirits and HPC. Yeah, yeah. Is there a hint you would like to throw at us? Uh, I mean, I, I think one of the business which I am very close to is AMC's. Okay. Okay. Just the business? Yes, yes, I understand the business and it's very exponential in character mm. and a lot of money is coming in. And good AMC's, all the bigger ones are getting listed now. Mm -hmm. So that would be a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this is the largest business in the world. I mean, uh, uh, today I think the largest is uh, it would uh, be BlackRock, Black Rock, yeah. which manages about closer to six trillion, yeah. six trillion dollars, right. single-handedly. So uh, I think th the very nature of the business is very consolidated in character, and uh, and we have just about begun in India. I mean, the equity flows have started, uh, and it will become much bigger. So I think the opportunity to because equity uh, mutual fund assets are just about five lakh, yeah. six lakh crores, six lakh crores out of one thirty five lakh crores. And your deposit base is 100 lakh crores. So I think it is just a sunrise industry. And in that, you get the biggest and the best uh, uh, to invest. I think uh, it's a free cash flow business. Rapid free cash flow, rapid growth, terrific brand equity. Can we get it at some reasonable price? So I think that's one area where uh, you might get this opportunity. Hmm. Uh, but we don't know uh, which one comes when and at what price it comes. So that is one opportunity. Then. Uh, the banking system still looks to be pretty good in the sense that uh, the newer banks have come in. Lot of, I hope this they open the tap uh, license on tap, and uh, 
Now, when I saw today's paper that incremental deposit accretion of the public sector bank is only 34 percent, where the installed base is about 78 percent. I think when when the the installed base shifts from the current 25, uh, say 22, 23 percent for private sector to say maybe even 50 percent in next 10 years, it's a stunning. Uh, kind of opportunity for uh, any of the well-managed banks, any of the well-managed You know, banks. a word which you have freely used in perhaps your recent wealth creation studies is value migration. Yeah. You give the example of Bharati and Indian pharma companies. Yeah. Now, we have seen value migration happening in private banks because they gained market share from mm. PSU mm. banks. Mm. Do you think the next level of value migration could happen to some of these NBFCs which are now becoming banks? And there are a couple of them, AU Small Bank, there is OG1, there is Equitas. Yeah, so value migration is a much broader thing. See, what is happening in value migration today? PSU banks, the banking opportunity is moving from PSU banks to private sector banks. That is a broad theme. Now, private sector bank is also in the form of NBFCs. Okay. And this is not their extended arm of uh, banks only because NBFCs get the liability from the banks. Banks stop at the branch and the NBFCs go up to the doorstep of the customer. That is how NBFCs are supposed to be doing. So, uh, clearly this NBFC plus private sector banks are one considered lot which is benefiting from the uh, current uh, slowdown or whatever uh, NPL problems or uh, manager problem, whatever problems uh, PSU have, PSU banks have, that is directly benefiting these guys. Now, it is such a longevity opportunity because it is happening not in a static world, it is happening in a 15 percent growing world. So, the size of the banking opportunity is growing at 15 percent and then you are shifting the uh, share from 10, 15 percent to 50, 60 percent. So, even if the share becomes 50-50, at that point of time, the number one private sector bank, I do not want to name anything, of course. but number one bank would be worth 40-50 uh, lakh crores. It will be very large. So, the size and the scope see, look is at, look, enormous. See, look at HDFC bank, today it is 6 percent, I think 6, 6.5 percent, 7 percent share. SBI is 22 percent. Yeah. So, forget about 22 percent. Even if you go to 12, 13 percent yeah. in next, uh, say, 5, 7, 10 years. What will be the size of that expanded uh, banking system? And when the economy itself is growing at about 15-15 yeah. percent. So, th really the size is very large. Uh, I am just going to get some you know, closing comments from you. And this is not about today, tomorrow, this yeah. year, next year. It is about 2020. What kind of market do you think we could be starting at? It is very difficult. Nikul, do not bother about 20 and all. Manage today. Okay. 20 is managed. Okay. See, you got to have a good process. You got to be optimist that, uh, I mean, I have seen 30 years of market. Is that a differentiating factor for you that you are you, you always optimistic? Yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. Is that if you are not a good investor? It is a must, it is the first starting point. If you are not optimistic, I mean, overly optimistic <laughs> is not required like me, but if you have to be a positive guy, because if you start seeing the bad things in the companies, there are so many bad companies that you will be stuck with them only. So, stock market uh, is like that, you know. You have to dip your uh, this thing yourself into the water. You have to come put uh, your some investing. My good thing is that when we started our career in the 80s, there were no good managers. There was no uh, uh, this uh, mutual fund concept. Today you are a professional. You are earning wonderfully well. You don't have to sweat about which stocks to buy. You find one good manager, give the money and done. Like Peter Lynch once said that far more money is lost in anticipating the correction than when the actual correction comes. Yeah, in. so you know what happens is that timing the market is it's the biggest curse. Yeah. So uh, what happens is that uh, yes, if you can time it successfully, you make some money, you, you save some. But while you are timing, you lose so much that it is not, I mean, you lose 10 and you gain 2. So for the 2, people are losing 10. Abhi kya karne ka? so, have to decide. <laughs> so closing comments, yeah. I read your presentation which talks about 0 CSR. <laughs> right. Yeah. When do we add another zero, zero to dash hazar? When will you make that? It is much easier. It is much, much, much easier. easier. Much easier because, uh, uh, and I mean, zero, zero thousand has taken thirty years. Yeah. I mean, thousand to ten thousand. If uh, if it doesn't happen in less than ten years, I think we have done a bad job. <laughs> so I wish you good luck and yeah. uh, thank you for. Uh, you know, just discussing a range of topics, including yeah. your thought process, your journey, nice and you know, fun. how from very humble beginnings where you've become, you've really inspired a yeah. lot of investors and a lot yeah. of our viewers. So, thank you for your time today and look forward yeah. to much Thanks. more engagements with you. It is now is my home, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, and yeah. that's it on this edition of Market Makers. Thank you for tuning in.